Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of That's Right, I Said It, uh, where I'm just a real guy, you know, um, no edits, no larger than life character who seems to have it all together and, um, you know, I'm going to extend my gracious hand to just help all of you meager heathens to uh, <laughs> deal with all your issues and you're welcome, you know, you're welcome, my children. Like I'm Jesus himself or something. No. No. <laughs> I, it was a bad joke. Sorry. Uh, but I'm not that guy. You know, I, I'm a real person living day to day, um, sometimes struggling day to day uh, in regards to substance abuse. And substance abuse is something that I've dealt with um, most of my life. Um, fr from the time I can remember being a young teenager um, was when I first started experimenting with uh, various substances and I'm 47 years old now so that kind of gives you um, a little bit of retrospect into how long and how much experience I have in this area and when I started this channel a little while back it was almost like therapy for me I just needed to get some things off of my chest and I needed to kind of find a way. Um, I had gotten really heavily on to MIT-45s, which are Kratom extracts. And listen, I've been taking Kratom uh, pretty regularly for about four, maybe four years. And um, I'm one of those people that I've toned down and I've balanced up my habits in my older age. Um, I haven't always been that balanced, but as a 47 year old man, it's the only thing I do. Kratom is the only thing I do outside of that. I eat super healthy. I exercise regularly. I drink tons of water. Um, I have, you know, healthy relationships at home, beautiful wife, beautiful children. Um, does that make the Kratom use okay? Does it? You know, if if that's the only thing that I can point to that I would consider a bad habit in my life, does that make my Kratom use okay? You know, and there's different schools of thought on that. You know, the 12-step program school of thought, was, well, has it caused you any negative consequences? Have you lost control over your addiction? Is your addiction controlling you? Then there's your answer. You know, then it, it needs to be gotten rid of in your life. And, uh, you know, by that measure, then I guess I wouldn't have much of a leg to stand on because I would definitely say that I'm dependent uh, upon Kratom to the point where if I went to stop taking it right now, I would certainly have some physical withdrawals associated with it. But then there's, you know, another school of thought where... You know, let me start by saying two wrongs don't make a right, okay? So I can sit here and say, well, look, you know, I work with, I don't know, all kinds of people that their bellies are out to here. They're, you know, 80, 100 pounds, if not more, overweight. They don't eat healthy. They don't exercise. They drink tons of coffee. I got people there that I know for a fact are addicted to Dr. Peppers. And, and when, you know, when I say that, it's almost like, <laughs> you know, People don't even take it seriously. People don't even take it seriously. You know, if I pointed to someone and said, yeah, that guy's addicted to heroin. That guy's addicted to crack. You know, people, oh, oh no. My gosh, I'll pray for him. That's just, it's horrible. And it is horrible. It is. And, and, um, But when one thing kills you slow and one thing can kill you fast, which is better, which is worse, you know? Um, because when I point to someone who has an issue with drugs and, and I, I say they have some sort of issue with drugs, then people go, oh no, you know? But when I point to the lady um, at my work that drinks five Dr. Peppers a day, and has high blood pressure, and is a diabetic, 
and has um, had an open heart surgery. And I hope she's not listening to this because I'm so just, well, I won't say her name. <laughs> I won't say her name. Um, has had an open heart surgery, so uh, openly has heart issues, um, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. And um, she still drinks about four Dr. Peppers per day. No water, only Dr. Peppers. And these aren't diet Dr. Peppers. These are the full-on infinity sugar Dr. Peppers. Um, but when I point to that person, you know, and say, oh, she's addicted to Dr. Peppers, nobody goes, oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I, you know, oh, let's pray for her. That's just, that's terrible. It's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, no, I like Coke. You know, my thing's Coke. You know, that's what somebody would say if I said, you know, she's addicted to Dr. Pepper. It's not, uh, it's, you know, or if I said, you know, to the guy who's got a belly out to here and, and has high blood pressure. Um, if I said, you know, um, you know, this guy's addicted to processed foods. You know, there's not a hush that falls over the room where somebody goes, oh, oh no. You know, poor guy, you know, I'll pray for him, you know. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, a man likes to eat, yeah, it's no big deal, right? And, you know, part of that is, um, I guess a picture that has been painted um, with a broad brush stroke across our society, across our country, you know, we see it in movies, you know, how drug addiction is, oh, Oh no, you know, it's bad and it gets sensationalized in films and stuff. And listen, I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of drug addiction here. Um, because as, you know, I could never, I could never, because I've been through things in my life that um, were such negative consequences that I literally didn't know if I'd be able to make it another day. And it's been a direct result of drug addiction and being addicted to some substance, right? So I'm not trying to downplay it, but I'm trying to give you some perspective, right? And it's been, uh, you know, kind of sensationalized in the movies that, you know, this is drugs, drugs, drugs are really, really bad, you know. And um, But there's other things and other negative habits that people have in their lives that, we don't look at in that way, you know, and that people are completely okay with because you don't see scenes in a movie where somebody goes, yeah, he's got, you know, bad addiction to, to Dr. Pepper or sugar, you know, or you don't see movies where, you know, somebody walks in the room and um, catches their child or their spouse, like with a Dr. Pepper in their hands, like, no. Oh thought you put those down you're gonna kill yourself you know knowing that sugar has been linked to cancer multiple kinds of cancer been linked to diabetes high blood pressure you know it puts you at a higher risk for stroke heart attack all these other things right but um but it's not been painted for us in that way in our society therefore we don't tend to see it that way and uh where am I going with this? I don't know. I'm kind of just talking. Um, <laughs> so I, I made this channel um, at first just as kind of therapy for me because I was on the MIT extracts really bad and it was starting to really, not only was it financially ruining me, um, you know, I was just having a, a lot of issues, you know, with just like heartburn all the time, which I'm a healthy person. So that's, that's not something that's typical for me, right? Um, so I just started having stuff like that where I was like, you know what, this, that's enough. It just doesn't feel right. I'm spending too much money, and uh, I have a family support, you know. So I just started inside, inside my heart and in my mind, it, just, it didn't feel right. And I wanted to stop uh, because I, I was, you know, anytime I can think of that many reasons that um, I shouldn't be doing something, then you know, it, it kind of becomes clear to me and I want to do the right thing, you know, by, by 
um, not just myself, but, but my family also. So I made the decision to quit and it was kind of a therapy for me just to talk it out and uh, talk to people. But, uh, I'm off the MITs now, you know, I do take Kratom powder still, and I, but I, um, it's been, you know, three months since I've been addicted to those MITs. Uh, so that aspect of it has changed for me, but, um, through this process, as I started, you know, talking through it and I got into 10, 15, 20 videos, you know, all these people started to come and I started getting subscribers and um, I noticed just based on the amount of comments that I was getting alone, um, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, man, this is a big problem. You know, substance abuse is a big problem and a big issue um, in in the world, I, I was going to say in our country, but, you know, that it's everywhere, everywhere, you know, some countries more than others, but it's a big problem everywhere. And um, based on the amount of comments I was getting, it was one of those things where I started to realize and understand that people need this. People need a forum um, that's a judgment free zone where they can go and talk about uh, said substance abuse issues. And they can get support from other people who are like-minded and who share the share similar struggles with them. And um, it's helpful. Talking about it helps. Getting it off your chest helps. And when you push things down into the pit of your basement and you don't talk about those things, they begin to fester. And they begin to rot you from the inside. And then what happens is... Um, these these things that you are keeping pushed down in the basement of your subconscious find a way to manifest and to rear their heads in other ways in your personal relationships at work um you know with family members just so forth and so on and so everybody knows there's more room on the outside than there is in right so it helps to talk about it and uh, and that's what people started doing and Sometimes when I do these videos, um, I try my best to be on and like be supportive to everyone who has a concern. I mean, I've had people come on and literally like I was concerned for that person. I found myself after reading their comment, actually in my time alone at home with my family, thinking about this person like, wow, you know, I wonder if so-and-so is okay. I've had people tell me they were on fentanyl. And they were trying their best to get off of it and trying to use, you know, Kratom, by example, to get off of it. And, you know, fentanyl, man, that's fucking scary, dude. You know, people drop dead from that all the time, especially because it's not regulated. So people don't know exactly how much they're getting. And it's just so freaking dangerous. Um, and I found myself being, like, fully invested in and in being concerned for these people, you know. And I have my own issues, but... Um, there's levels. We've talked about that on this channel. There's levels to drug addiction. You know, as a 47-year-old man, you know, taking maybe 8 to 10 grams of Kratom every day, but then eating healthy, exercising, whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't have any immediate concerns, you know, for uh, my physical and mental health at this moment. So I felt like um, this platform really opened up a space where people can come and talk about these things. And there's times where um, I want to be involved um, and always be able to respond to people when they leave a comment on my video and stuff. But there's time where they, times where they just get bigger than me. You know, they get larger than me and they kind of, the comments begin to take on a life of their own, right? And, uh, and, and there's times where I don't have time to respond or, you know, I'm, I'm, I work full time. Uh, I have a family at home, you know, in, in my off time when I'm not working or spending time with my family, I try to get in some exercise. My, both of my parents are still alive as a 47 year old man. My, both my parents are still alive and they're, uh, but they're getting older. So there's times I need to go help them with different things. And so I'm, I'm just a very, very busy. And for a lot of you who, uh, have been following me recently, I have a month and a half year old. A month and a half year old? <laughs> that just makes no sense whatsoever. A month and a half old. Can't be a month and a half year old if you're only a month and a half old. Anyway. I, and again, I don't edit this shit. I don't edit any of it. I'm just on here. I'm just a guy. Just on here just talking. You know? Uh, but it's working. 
and and people want to talk about these things. People don't have a place to talk about these things because, um, you know, it's such a taboo subject. You know, when somebody starts talking about drugs or the seriousness of how it's affecting their lives in a negative way. Um, people are almost allergic to talking about that. Or when it, when somebody talks about it, it hits so personal that it's kind of like politics and religion. You just don't talk about it. And when you do, people will shut down. They're like, oh, oh, mm. he said the A word, addiction. He said the D word, drugs, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, and, uh, and that sucks because it needs to be, it's such a huge problem. And, um, it is such a, what is the word for that? When it's a, ah, I want to say it like that's it. It's rampant everywhere. It's such a massive problem all over the world that it's almost ironic in a way that no one wants to talk about it. It's right there in front of all our noses, but nobody wants to talk about it. And when you go somewhere on a regular basis, when you go into a grocery store, you're probably within 10 feet of 10, 20 different people in that hour-long visit to the grocery store. You, you probably walk within 5 feet of at least 20, 25 people that have some sort of substance abuse issue. And if it's not a substance... They're uh, addicted to social media or to TikTok, and uh, that's negatively affecting your family, you know? And we live in a society where we're constantly, um, we're, we're constantly doing things to take ourselves away, to remove us from the reality of what we see around us, and, and we're, we're just um, almost designed that way. You know, our system is almost set up that way, um, you know, with the the phones and everybody walking around with a, you know, I don't know, a two by six computer in their hands where they can go on the Internet and do this, all these different social media platforms. And you can just get lost and you can go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole, basically like I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was I'm here and then I'm there and then I was like, you know, I I mean what I'm doing right now is literally um a perfect illustration of the type of life we live. We just jump from here to there to there and then oh, we got 5 seconds where we don't have something to focus on. Oh shit. Well, let me go pick up my phone. Oh, well let me see what's going on on Facebook. Oh, you know, okay, I've already seen, I've already been through my news feed four times on Facebook today, so let me see what kind of YouTube videos are on the TV. You know, I mean, it just on and on and on and on it goes. Um, but uh, I've seen a couple of comments recently, um, and, and, it, and it just let me know, it illustrated to me that you know, people really need this. People really need to be able to talk about these things. And people's relationships with with uh, drugs, substances, how it affects them, how on an interpersonal level it affects their families and them with their families and their relationships with their families and friends and this and that and the other is very personal to people. But then it's something that is, shh, oh, oh no, don't, don't, shh, don't talk about that. We'll talk about that, you know, and, and then you're, and then also, um, you got family members who, um, their family members don't have substance abuse issues, right? So it's a double edged sword. If you're a, a, if you're a drug addict and you have family who does not have substance abuse issue, issues, you can't talk to them because they don't understand. If you're a drug addict and then all of your family are substance abusers as well, you can't talk to them because they're doing the same shit you're doing, right? And and not only that, but between families, things are so, you know, personal. Things are, people become so sensitive so easily, and so people can't really talk about it with their families. And not only that, but there's been personal hurt in in those situations. You know, you've hurt your family members, or uh, you stole 
things for your family members. Perfect example, I used to steal narcotics from my parents. That's one of the ways I became addicted to narcotics is by stealing narcotic medications from my parents. And um, that's something that's really hard to talk to them about, you know? Um, because, I mean, <laughs> just imagine, you know? They love me. I love them, and I know they've forgiven me. I know that for a fact, and I have apologized to them. But it was more like in the moment when they caught me doing it. You know, we have a couple-minute conversation. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I just, you know, I've become addicted to these. It just drives me to do things that you know I wouldn't normally do. I would never steal anything else from you, blah, 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 blah. You know, but there's been family hurt there. And so it makes it really tough to talk about. Well, but that's where this channel comes in, you know, and, uh, and I'm one of you, you know, I'm not a, uh, professional psychotherapist. I have a degree in human development, family studies, you know, I know a thing or two. Um, I'm somewhat educated on, um, mental health and how to go about improving your mental health in certain ways, but I'm definitely not coming to anyone as some professional psychiatrist. Um, or mental health counselor, because I'm not. Uh, I'm one of you. And I have learned by doing this channel that people just want to talk about it. And people just want to talk about it with people who are not going to judge them and not going to point, point at them and say, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Um, that's not what people need. I mean, there's a reality you know, and, and depending on what your personal relationship with substances are, there's a reality that things don't necessarily need to be sugar-coated for you either. You know, we're not going to sit here and say, oh, you're shooting up heroin 10 times a day? No, nah, that's cool, man. You do you. You do you. Fuck with everybody else. Uh, it's your life. You know, you do you. No. You know, there's a certain standard that we have to hold one another ourselves and one another too, you know, and from one drug addict to another, I want the best for you as a human, you know, because like I said, drug addict, yes, but human first. Okay. And I always have to be a human first. You always have to be a human first. So if you're doing something that I'm just like, Oh, that sounds scary. You know, um, I'll call you on that, but not in a hateful, judgmental way, in a way of concern, like, hey, I don't want anything to happen to you, you know, and I've done that before on this channel um, in a way that, hey, I, I have concern for your well-being as another human, as another person, you know, and uh, sometimes you have to have those uh, hard conversations based on that, but um, there's a comment here. Uh, by a guy, and his name is Ryan Marvell, seven ninety three. That's his. Uh, that's his username. And uh, I told Ryan that I might talk about this a little bit, but he left a a comment uh, the other day on one of my videos, and it was one of those that I try to respond to all of them, but it was one of those that just kind of slipped past me, and uh, and then I ended up seeing it today. Um, and he was having you know kind of a back and forth with another uh, commenter, and. Uh, and what they were doing is something I really love to see, you know, and uh, he was being real in this comment and uh, he was having some struggles and he was having some mental struggles at this moment. And he was unloading that in the comments and God knows I'm glad to see people doing that. Yeah, I mean, I have days like that and I've done, you guys know if you've gone to and backlogged and like uh, backwatched backwashed that sounds too much like backwash <laughs> if you've gone back and watched some of my prior videos i've had times where i was just kind of like yeah and i feel this way and i'm just kind of like this and you know and i've had videos like that where i was kind of struggling especially when i was going through my taper and stuff you know um sometimes you just get your shit on your shoulders and life is freaking hard man you know, and then you have so many scenarios where you can't talk about it and you feel like you have to be strong. So you're doing what? You're shoving it down into the pit of the basement like we were just talking about that you shouldn't do. And then it begins to fester. 
you know, because you can't go to work when you're supposed to be going there to get paid for something, and then you start talking to them about your substance abuse and how you're feeling sad and down. I mean, you can't, you know, I mean, maybe you can, you know, if you do, you've got a better job than what I do, because where I work, they expect you to work, you know, and that doesn't usually include an hour-long psychotherapy session about how your drug addiction and your substance abuse has gotten out of control. That's not, it's not part of it, you know, um, but anyway, I, I want to I want to get uh, to his comment real quick so I can talk about it a little bit. And Ryan, I hope it's okay, man. That I mean, you left the comment for anyone to see, so I'm assuming you're probably okay with my reading it out and then responding to it. But um, Ryan says three to five grams is a decent sized dose? Question mark. Man, I'm so screwed. I got off nine years straight on methadone. 16 years of opiates with Kratom, eight months ago. The most I've taken was 14 grams a day. I recently got down to nine grams a day and had some life crap happen and went up a little bit. We've been there, brother. I've been there for sure. The last two days, I've been taking 12 grams. Ugh, I'm just tired. The Kratom hasn't ever done much besides help my crippling anxiety. And I've had this my entire life, even before the opiates and opioids. I've never gotten a really great feeling from it. Um, and yeah, that's, I've heard a lot of people say that. And that's because it's a partial agonist. You know, and Kratom is not going to get you as high and as euphoric as some of the harder synthesized opiates, like a Vicodin and Percocet. We, I was just talking about this a couple of days ago in one of my, video, uh, one of my videos. So if you don't take a large amount, and you're being, you know, very moderate when you take it. Some people don't really feel much from it, you know. And and I'm I'm that way too. A lot of times I find myself not really getting high per se, just kind of staving off any withdrawals because it's something I've been taking for you know about four years. So I know if I stop taking it, it's gonna suck. Um. So then then he says. The initial kratom withdrawals aren't as intense as what I'm used to with opioids, but the anhedonia is just as bad for me. Um, I agree with that, and that's something I've talked about. I have uh, a previous video talking about, and, and literally, it's funny you said that, Ryan, because literally the name of the video is the worst, uh, it was something like the, the worst kratom withdrawal, comma, anhedonia. And that's what the whole video is about. And to me, that's the worst one. You know, the physical shit, I can kind of, you know, tough through that. But the anhedonia and the just difficulty finding pleasure in anything. I'm one of those people that wants to be happy. You know, I want to feel happy. And a lot of us drug addicts, so that's, that's one of the reasons we got hooked on mind-altering substances, right? Because you just want to be happy. You feel that happiness and that joy and that contentment, and you're like, damn, I just want to feel this all the time, right? And uh, it's one of the biggest mind fucks ever in existence. Um, it makes me wonder why God made opiate receptors. It's just, you know, and, and I'm sure there's a reason. But um, we've gotten to where we're uh, completely uh, <laughs> using mind-altering substances to... Um, you know, alter the functionality of those opiate receptors on a regular basis. And, you know, that's our fault. So let me keep reading here because I'm going to run out of time. Um, and, and he says, also, I only take Kratom twice a day at 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. I'm just irritable every day since switching to Kratom. And I don't know if it's because I only take it two times a day or what, but I'm scared to split the amount I take into three doses because I don't want it to be harder to get off of. I don't know the answer, but I'm just so bummed I am now taking 12 grams a day. The only time I feel okay is after my workout each day. I take, I take my Kratom shortly after for the first time, and I feel okay for about an hour. The rest of the day, I'm irritable. I don't think all of this is because of Kratom. Because I have anxiety and OCD issues as well. So all of it combined is probably what makes me irritable. I just don't know the answer to feel normal anymore. Abused drugs for way too long. I don't know if I can ever feel normal again. Minus the one hour each day. 
Also, I don't know if it's possible to feel okay without a substance because of all the abuse. I may just be screwed. I have yet to find anyone who abused opioids as long as I did and quit everything and got back to normal. I need to know that it's possible because it seems like I'm because it seems like I'm kind of screwed. Sorry for the rant, by the way, just struggling mentally. Bro. <laughs> No reason to apologize, and I'm telling you now that when I read this, I was like, how many times have I just felt this way and just wanted to say something to someone about it, but had no one that I could talk to about it? And I'm about to run out of time, so I think that I'll pick up on this, Ryan, the next time, but I just wanted to say, um, you know, you said a lot of things in here that really hit home with me. And um, I'm glad that you said what you said, because um, it brings out kind of a truth to drug addiction that, you know, it's not all, oh, I'm feeling high, I'm feeling good, and I just stay that way, and everything's hunky-dory, and then, you know, then we downplay the withdrawal, so when I'm not taking it, it's not really that bad, you know, and then we just, we just lie to ourselves, and we just keep going, and going, and going, and going, and everything's just great, or at least we make it seem that way, but... Behind the scenes, you know, when the camera's not on or when you're not on performing in front of other people, whether it be at work, whether you be at the grocery store or whether it be at a family function or whatever it is, behind the scenes, there's a reality. There's a reality for a lot of us who are not good with where we are. And some people are good with where their substance use is. And they're good. But there is a reality for many others, and I've been here where he is, and the reality that I'm talking about is is this, is exactly what Ryan's describing here. So I, I just want to leave, uh, I'll pick it up next time, but I want to leave the video with this. I will say that it seems like um, for certain people, and you've talked about you know anxiety and you've had anxiety, seems like for some people, you need to either be okay with taking a medication like that or not okay. You know, there's no hot or cold or, or there's no in-between with some people, I think, on Kratom. And for some people, I think the best thing to do is to not take it at all, right? Because if it's doing this to you, um, I feel like, you know, maybe... And, and, and it's one of those things where when you're not okay with it, it's just kind of like... You always have that in the back of your mind that you need to change something. But as soon as you accept that, you know, okay, it's just who I am. I'm going to use this to, to, to live life. Then it kind of becomes, okay, no problem. Then you just take it and you can stay on that cloud all the time, right? But you kind of have to make that decision. That, and, and it's a hard one. It is because it's, it's been ingrained inside of us. Taking something every day is bad. Drug addiction is bad. You know, drinking the Dr. Peppers every day is bad, too. So you have to decide um, if it's something you're going to live with or not going to live with. You're going to have to get on the pot or off the pot. And I think that is the case for a lot of people. And it could be for you as well, Ryan. But, dude, we're supporting you. We're here for you. Drop a comment. Let us know what your progress is. And uh, I taught, I saw that. Um, you had an interaction with another guy on here. You guys were really just supporting each other. I freaking love that, man. That's why I made this channel. And I love you guys, and I'm here to support you. All right? Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this real content. And uh, this is Corey. Out. See you next time. Peace.